So, you see uh, uh, what we did uh, last time was to try to define when the when a an analytic function is uh, 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 having infinity as a point of analyticity okay. And so as I told you uh, if you recall uh, one of the standard ways of defining analyticity at a point is to say that the function is differentiable at that point and also in a neighbourhood uh, at every point in a neighbourhood of the given point okay. So this is how you define analyticity at a point in the complex plane okay. But since we are worried about analyticity at infinity okay, uh, what we do is that we tend to look at the point at infinity as uh, a singularity, a singular point of, a, of an analytic function which is defined in a deleted neighbourhood of infinity which means that the function is analytic for mod z greater than r for r sufficiently large okay. Outside a circle of sufficiently large radius the function you are given a function which is analytic and then infinity the point at infinity becomes an isolated uh, singular point and then you want to say the function is analytic at infinity. So it would not help to uh, say that the function is differentiable at infinity because uh, if you write the uh, dif uh, you know uh, a differential limit it does not make sense at infinity. So what is the way out? The way out is to uh, actually get the in draw inspiration from uh, Riemann's removable singularity theorem. Riemann's removable singularity theorem tells you that if you are looking at an isolated singularity of an analytic function at a point in the complex plane then saying that the function is analytic at that point namely that the uh, which is ex essentially saying that the function can be extended to an analytic function at that point including that point okay uh, which is one of the definitions of what a removable singularity is okay is equivalent to requiring that the function has a limit at that point it is uh, which is equivalent to the continuity, of the continuity of the function at that point. In fact it is also equivalent to the function being bounded in a neighbourhood of that point bounded in modulus of course. So this is so the so the moral of the story is that you can use these conditions to define the function to be analytic at infinity okay. What you can say is that though it will not it, it does not make sense uh, it will not work to say that the function is differentiable at infinity. You can always say that the function has a removable singularity at infinity in the sense that the function either has a limit at infinity so the limit as z tends to uh, infinity f z exists okay that is one condition the other condition is the function is bounded in bounded at infinity that means there is a deleted neighbourhood of infinity where the function the modulus of the function uh, can be made less than a, a positive constant okay and uh, and these these conditions are all one and the same okay and why these conditions are one and the same is because of this other uh, important philosophy that uh, uh, the studying the function at infinity uh, studying studying f of w at infinity is the same as studying uh, f of uh, 1 by w at 0 okay. So uh, and and I told you the, the 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 rationale or the or the justification for that is that z going to w equal to one by z is a, is actually a homeomorphism of the Riemann extended complex plane onto the extended <coughs> complex plane, which interchanges zero and infinity. Okay, and further, if you throw out the point zero and infinity, uh, then you get the punctured complex plane, the complex plane punctured at the origin. Uh, it this map z going to 1 over z which is equal to w is going to be uh, an analytic holomorphic isomorphism of the punctured complex plane onto itself okay and under such an analytic isomorphism the nature of the singularity at 0 and the nature of the singularity at infinity which is the image of 0 they should correspond okay this is the philosophy that we use. Now uh, what I want to say is that I want to go ahead with uh, go ahead with this and so um, so now that we have defined uh, a function being analytic at infinity okay and the weakest definition for a function being analytic at infinity is that it is bounded at infinity namely there is a point I mean there is a small neighbourhood of infinity okay which is should be thought of as uh, all z such that mod z greater than r for r sufficiently large then mod fz should be made you should be able to make mod fz less than m okay for some positive constant m okay. So, uh, so that is exactly what you want to do. So what I want to do next is I want to worry about uh, 
how uh, I want to worry about what it means to say that a function has a removable singularity at infinity okay. So we want to analyze this right. So let us take the uh, let us take the uh, 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 so we will look at the case case of an entire function alright. Uh, but even before that I wanted to say that you know uh, this there is there is one more aspect that we need to we need to actually look into okay and and this aspect is about uh, this aspect is about uh, uh, the Laurent series okay. So you see uh, you know the uh, in some sense uh, how do you study the isolated singularity of a function at a point in the complex plane at a point z0 in the complex plane. Uh, one of the ways of studying this is by looking at the Laurent expansion of the function centered at z0 that means you expand the function in positive and negative powers of z minus z0 that is the Laurent expansion you get the, the coefficients are the Laurent coefficients and the Laurent, Laurent theorem says that there is such a Laurent expansion okay which is in general valid in an annulus right and uh, and then you know that the, the nature of the Laurent expansion to be more specific the nature of the principal part or the singular part of the Laurent expansion will tell you what kind of singularity z0 is. So you know that if the Laurent expansion has only negative powers uh, I mean it has uh, only finitely many negative powers of z minus z0 you know it is a pole uh, uh, if it has no uh, that is uh, if the principal part has only finitely many terms then it is a pole okay. If the principal part does does not exist namely if the principal part is 0 then it is a removable singularity okay and if the principal part has uh, infinitely many negative powers of z minus z0 then it is an essential singularity okay this is this are this is the trying to classify singularities based on the Laurent expansion okay which is something that you know. Now the question is what is the analog uh, this of, of this when z0 is a point at infinity not a not a, when the z0 is a point in the complex plane but when z0 is a point at infinity. So how do you get a handle on this how do you get a handle on this so you see uh, so let me write that down so my point is what is this Laurent series Laurent series at infinity uh, which is a rather funny thing uh, uh, again you know uh, the the uh, you must remember that the way you deal with infinity is uh, you have to be very clever there are certain things you can do with infinity there are certain things you cannot do with infinity. So for example when you want to define a function to be analytic at infinity you do not take the route of trying to define it differentiable at infinity because the derivative at infinity is not defined it is not easy to you cannot define it so easily right. Of course you can go to uh, another level of abstraction called what is called of what is called a Riemann surface okay and you can make the uh, you can make the complex uh, plane along with the point at infinity namely the external complex plane into the into a Riemann surface and uh, uh, and once you have a Riemann surface and you have a holomorphic function then you can talk about derivative at any point by using local coordinates okay but then we we don't want to get into that amount of generality you can you can look up that point of uh, reasoning uh, if you look at my video course on riemann surfaces which is available on the web okay but then let's not go to that level of abstraction okay at this moment at this level of our exposition we don't try to define derivative at infinity but trying to say it is analytic infin infinity we get away by uh, using a drawing inspiration from Riemann's removable singularity theorem okay by simply for example just requiring the function is continuous at infinity okay. So uh, in the same way uh, if you look at the Laurent series at infinity how do you define this so you know the see the idea of um, uh, so, so you have to think like this the idea of what is a Laurent series see the whole point about a Laurent series a Laurent series uh, is a generalization of the Taylor series okay and what is the Taylor series? The Taylor series is trying to express uh, an analytic function in terms of simple analytic functions functions which are the simplest possible analytic functions. So you know if when I say Taylor series of an analytic function at a point z0 in the complex plane I am simply expanding the function in powers of z minus z0 and I know z the powers of z minus z0 they are this they are simple functions they are simple polynomials okay and I am trying to uh, expand I am, I am trying to write the function the given analytic function as a limit of polynomials after all a power series 
for that matter any functional series is by definition when it converges is just the limit of partial sums okay and if you take a taylor series or a power series uh, then uh, the partial sums are all polynomials okay and it's the limit of these polynomials that uh, that gives you the given function okay which is the limit of the series so the purpose of a taylor series is to expand a function as a series in terms of simple functions that's the idea okay and this is this is at a point where the function is analytic okay but suppose the point here in question is not is a point not a point of analyticity suppose it's a point where the function has an isolated singularity then then what comes in is the Laurent expansion the Laurent expansion gives says that well you will all you can still get a expansion of the function in the form of a series but then now you will have to allow also negative powers okay now so in general we think of philosophically we think of the Laurent series as do, as a uh, as a generalization of Taylor series and uh, the guiding philosophy is that it number one is that it allows you to expand the function in terms of simple functions that is that is point number one. Point number two is that the Laurent series can be broken up into two pieces okay there is one part of the Laurent series which consists of positive and zero powers of uh, z minus z0 where z0 is a point where you are looking at the center of the series that is called the analytic part of the Laurent series okay and then there is also the part of the series that involves the negative powers of z minus z0 which you call as the singular part or the principal part of the Laurent series. So you see the general idea of the Laurent series is that it breaks the function into two functions it breaks the functions into two pieces uh, as a it's, it expresses the function as a sum of two pieces one piece is the analytic part of the function at, at that point in the neighborhood of the point the other piece is the principal part of the function at that point which is not analytic at that point okay. Now using these two guiding uh, philosophies you can also define what a Laurent series at infinity means okay and well the well the, the point is that the point is as follows so you, you uh, uh, suppose uh, uh, f of z uh, is analytic at uh, uh, z uh, equal to infinity uh, uh, or, or let me not even start with analytic at infinity let me just say uh, uh, let me say it is analytic in a neighborhood of infinity suppose f of z is analytic in a neighborhood of infinity say uh, in uh, and you know for obvious reasons let me do the following thing let me not use z let me use w okay. Uh, uh, say in mod w greater than r okay so i'm using w as a variable uh, because i'll i'll always uh, uh, you know when i want to study study w at infinity i will rather study you know there's one of the uh, tactics that you be we have been using is that you study w equal to 1 by z at 0 so uh, that's why i want to reserve w for uh, 1 by z okay so uh, suppose f is analytic in a neighborhood of infinity say in mod w uh, greater than r uh, so um, uh, of course by this I do not mean that the function is analytic at infinity mind you okay. So you know you have, you have to be a little careful when I say a function is analytic in a neighborhood of a point in the complex plane it is understood that the function is also analytic at that point okay. But then when I am saying f of w is analytic in a neighborhood of infinity I am I'm not necessarily meaning that it is also analytic at, inf at the point at infinity the point at infinity could is a singularity okay it's an isolated singularity i don't know whether it is analytic or not okay so le le let me state that uh, uh, we we do not know we do not know if f is analytic at infinity okay now what do you do with this of course you know the uh, let's go by uh, the philosophy that you to study f of w at infinity you study f of 1 by z at 0 okay uh, the the behavior the behavior of f of z f of w at w equal to infinity is the same as the behavior of f of 1 by z which is g of z mind you f of 1 by z is the same as w f of w where w is equal to 1 by z at uh, at z equal to 0 
okay. Uh, note uh, that uh, g, uh, g of z is defined uh, in uh, uh, defined and analytic defined and analytic or holomorphic in a deleted neighbor, uh, neighborhood of the origin which is just given by 0 less than mod z less than 1 by r which is actually uh, writing this mod w greater than r in terms of z okay putting w equal to 1 by z okay. So, uh, and 0 less than 0 strictly less than mod z strictly less than 1 by r is a deleted neighborhood of the origin uh, uh, which is a circle uh, I mean it is the interior of a circle with the origin removed radius 1 by r okay. Now, but then you know now, now we are looking at the point 0 in the in the in the complex plane and we have Laurent's theorem since now 0 is an is an isolated singularity of g of z okay and the idea is that the nature of the singularity of g at 0 should be the same as the nature of the singularity of f at infinity okay that is the idea okay. And of course you know why that is correct because z going to w which is z going to 1 by z is an isomorphism okay of, of deleted neighborhoods all right. So now so g has a Laurent expansion okay. So g has a Laurent expansion has a Laurent expansion. So what is the Laurent expansion? It is uh, uh, g of z equal to sigma n equal to minus infinity to infinity uh, a n z power n. This is the Laurent expansion of g okay and mind you I am uh, the center of the expansion is the origin normally if the center is the point z0 then you have to use powers of z minus z0 but here z0 is 0 so you use powers of z and the point that it is a Laurent expansion is that there are negative powers of z included as well that is why this the summation is running from minus infinity to plus infinity and uh, well so this is the uh, uh, this is g as it is. Now you know uh, uh, what you must understand is that you know if you look at if you look at this uh, what does it mean for f so so what this will tell you uh, is that uh, see this is valid for uh, mods mod z less than 1 by r z not equal to 0 okay and if i plug in see of course instead of z i can put 1 by w okay instead of z i can put 1 by w and g of 1 by w is just f of w okay so it, this is the same as writing <laughs> this is equivalent to writing f of w is equal to sigma you know n equal to minus infinity to infinity uh, a uh, n w power minus n okay. So I can simply uh, replace z by 1 by w so z power n becomes w power minus n and uh, summation will run from again minus infinity plus infinity the only thing is that uh, because I have changed my uh, variable uh, the powers uh, the power of uh, the nth power of the variable uh, has a negative subscript okay right. So, so this is well this is a Laurent expansion but now so you know uh, uh, the point is that the Laurent expansion uh, so, so this gives you a clue as to what you should call the Laurent expansion of f at infinity you can very well call this expression that you have written for f as a Laurent expansion at infinity okay because it is in line with the philosophy that it is expressing f as a series okay in terms of simple functions the functions are just powers of z okay. So you can very well call this uh, thing on the right uh, this expression for f w as a Laurent expansion of f at infinity that is fair enough but then there is a little bit more to be seen you see if you write if you look at g of z the Laurent expansion splits into two pieces as I told you the Laurent expansion splits into a principal part which is a singular part plus an analytic part okay and the principal part or the singular part consists of negative powers of z. So, so, so you know let me write this like this so this is sigma n equal to minus infinity to minus 1 a n z power n plus sigma n equal to 0 to infinity uh, a n z power n okay. Uh, there are two pieces and this fellow here is the uh, 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 so what I have written here is the principal part 
is the principal or the singular part at the at the origin okay and this part is the analytic part at the origin okay so uh, you know uh, so you know if you want let let me let me give symbols to these things so this is so if you want this is g uh, s uh, of z g s of z is the singular part okay and uh, this is uh, uh, g a of z g a of z is the analytic part all right now let us make this change of variable which is z going to w which is equal to 1 by z okay and you know uh, now watch carefully what is our philosophy our philosophy is that if you change variable from z to 1 over z okay then uh, the behavior at 0 at z equal to 0 should correspond to the behavior or at of w equal to 1 by z at infinity therefore if you go by this if i transform gs of z to w which is 1 by z what i should get should be uh, the singular part at infinity okay because it because gs of z is a singular part of it's a singular part at z equal to 0 if i transform gs of z by putting z equal to 1 by w what i should get is a singular pa part at infinity okay and similarly if i transform ga of z by putting z equal to 1 by w i should get the analytic part at infinity so what do i get see basically what i get is i get f of w you see is so i'll get sigma n equal to minus infinity to minus 1 uh, an so i'll get w to the minus n plus sigma here i'll get n equal to 0 to infinity uh, an uh, w to the minus n okay and if you watch carefully uh, so so let me let me use a different color at this point uh, if you watch carefully now you see this guy here this corresponds to uh, what is this this is just g s of 1 by uh, this is g s of 1 by w okay because i have put z equal to 1 by w and but g s was a singular part and therefore g s of 1 by w should also be the singular part so this should be uh, in principle this must be equal to the singular part of uh, uh, f at uh, f of w okay and what are you and and watch carefully the singular part of f at w has what powers of w it has positive powers of w okay it has positive powers of w because n is negative so w to the n uh, minus n is positive therefore uh, the moral of the story is that if you write a, if you write a Taylor series if you write a positive power series in a variable that at infinity corresponds to a singular part okay and that is that is that is very believable because as you go to infinity okay the partial sums which are polynomials are going to go to infinity so infinity is a pole actually the for the at least for the partial sums okay it is not bounded at infinity so it is correct okay so the, the the whole point is that when you look at the so the Taylor series at infinity should be thought of uh, uh, I mean the, the when you look at the Laurent series at infinity the principal part should it will look like a Taylor series at the origin it is because it is exactly that by the transformation is it going to 1 over z okay so this is this this is the singular part of f and then and then this guy here uh, this is uh, 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 this is f uh, a of w which is uh, g a of 1 by w so, and this is the analytic part uh, at infinity okay so you see f of w uh, is also split into a singular part f s w plus uh, f a of w which is an analytic part at infinity okay and mind you the analytic part at infinity contains all the negative powers including the constant because i have put n equal to 0 is also here so a naught is here in the analytic part at infinity and uh, so you see uh, when you when you look at the variable uh, at 0 okay then the 
analytic part consists of the uh, non negative terms and the singular part consists of the negative terms but when you look at the variable at infinity the analytic part consists of the ne uh, negative terms and the uh, including the constant and the principal part consists of the positive terms this is the this is exactly what happens and it is correct okay. Now uh, why do you think that this analytic why, why do you think that the negative powers are anal, uh, the, 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 the portion of the expansion which involves the negative powers is analytic at infinity that is correct because you see uh, uh, as the variable approaches infinity the negative powers approach 0. So you, you see that the it is bounded essentially okay so it is analytic and because our definition of analytic at infinity is either that it should be bounded or it should tend to a limit okay and no pow positive power of the of a variable will ever tend to uh, will ever be bounded or will ever tend to a 0 if you let the variable go to infinity okay so so everything is fine so you know so here is the so here is our definition our definition is you take a function analytic uh, you take a function which is analytic in a deleted neighborhood of infinity okay write out its Laurent expansion okay uh, basically the Laurent expansion is a Laurent expansion of uh, uh, by, by gotten by changing the variable to its reciprocal okay and then what you do is you take the positive part of the Laurent expansion okay uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the original variable and call that as a singular part okay and the negative part including the, uh, including the constant term is what is called the analytic part okay. So now we have this uh, clear definition of what a Laurent series at infinity should mean okay fine. Now once you have made this definition of Laurent series at infinity what you need to know is that uh, whether this fits in well with our uh, with, with the theory that you do on the finite complex plane. So for example uh, you can ask this question uh, suppose of you know for a point z0 in the finite complex plane uh, a function is uh, analytic at that point uh, if, if you assume to begin with that that, that point is an, is an isolated singularity the function is analytic at that point if and only if you write the Laurent expansion about that point it has no singular part it is principal part is 0 okay. So if you go by that philosophy for a function f which is defined in a neighborhood of infinity I mean for which infinity is an isolated singular point the function will be analytic at infinity if the Laurent expansion of at infinity has no singular part that is what should happen. Now does that happen it does because you see here is my function fw defined in neighborhood of infinity uh, its singular part is this uh, is this uh, part which consists of positive powers of w okay if that singular part is not there okay that, that means that uh, I can express f only in terms of negative powers of z, uh, w then that is of course analytic at infinity because all these go to 0 as uh, w go, goes to infinity okay. So the moral of the story is that the uh, our definition is correct so you know uh, the point is that sometimes you may have to make definitions uh, based on uh, certain philosophy and then you have to check whether it matches with uh, what what happens what you expect to happen uh, uh, as morally correct okay. So, so, so it, it from this it is very clear that a function uh, is analytic at infinity if and only if its singular part at infinity vanishes okay. The, if you take the Laurent expansion at infinity okay then its singular part vanishes. So, uh, so, let, so let me write a few things so see this is the this is called the uh, singular part uh, of fw at infinity and this guy here uh, is called the analytic part <coughs> of uh, f w at infinity and and now you know if you if you look at it in a very uh, uh, simple way you know uh, when you are looking at infinity the good functions are negative powers of w because they go to 0 and the bad functions are positive powers of w because they go to infinity. So uh, if you expect a function to be good at infinity it should be expressible only in terms of negative powers of w and that is why the negative powers of w along with the constant that part is the analytic part at infinity okay so the, so, so the definition is very clear and the, with this definition you see that Riemann's removable singularity theorem is also valid 
uh, in its various forms at the point at infinity a function namely a function uh, which is which has infinity as an isolated singularity has that singularity as a removable singularity if and only if it is bounded in a neighborhood of infinity if and only if it tends to a limit at infinity and that is also equivalent to saying that the Laurent series at infinity has no singular part they are all equivalents okay. So, you get the same version of the theorem as you would get in the uh, in the case of a finite point a point in the usual complex plane okay. So, everything uh, fits well the only thing that does not work is trying to define a derivative at infinity that does not work okay. Fine. So, uh, now what I am going to do is I am going to ask this question uh, as to what it means to having a, a, a removable singularity at infinity for example uh, for a for a good function for example for a function like an entire function okay. So, what does it mean and uh, you will see that that will throw up uh, uh, connections with uh, uh, Liouville's theorem and so on. Uh, so, see so let us let us let us analyze this suppose uh, that uh, uh, f uh, f of w has w equal to infinity as a uh, removable singularity okay. Um, uh, so, so uh, f w uh, is f analytic at I think is it, so it has no singular part it has only the analytic part of its expansion and that is what this is writable as you know the analytic part of the expansion at infinity will involve negative powers of <coughs> the variable and also the constant term. So, it will be n equal to 0 to infinity if you want <coughs> I can call it as b n w power um, ok. So, <coughs> this is the analytic part at infinity. Now, let us analyze what it means to say that the function uh, uh, is is for example uh, you know entire suppose so I am looking at the following case suppose I have an entire function and suppose it is analytic at infinity what happens we will see that it will reduce to a constant okay and that is just another avatar of the Liouville's theorem okay. So, how do you see that see so, suppose f has a removable singularity at w equal to infinity then f of w has this expansion which is analytic at infinity then you see g of z which is f of 1 by z where I put w equal to 1 by z what I will get is I will get sigma n equal to 0 to infinity I will get b n e z power n okay which is you can see that that is clearly a Taylor series at the origin it is a positive it is a power series at the origin okay centered at the origin. So, it has to represent an analytic function and that is correct because you f is analytic at infinity f w is analytic at w equal to infinity if and only if g of z which is f of 1 by z uh, that is analytic at z equal to 0. Let us go back to uh, Riemann's removable singularity theorem okay saying that f is uh, saying that f is analytic at infinity is same in, say is the same as saying that f is bounded at infinity okay. So, it means f is bounded in a deleted neighborhood of infinity all right. So, uh, uh, by by if you want Riemann's removable singularity theorem uh, f is bounded. So, I am using BDD as an abbreviation for bounded at w equal to infinity. So, f of w if you want. So, uh, there exists a positive constant m greater than 0 such that you know uh, mod f of w uh, is less than m for uh, if uh, well if mod w if mod w is greater than m okay. So, this is this is what bounded at infinity means uh, in a neighborhood of infinity the function in modulus can be bounded by a positive constant. Okay, and this is this is equivalent to infinity being a good point, namely infinite. It is equivalent to infinity being a removable singularity. Okay, now watch. See, uh, for uh, 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 mod w less than or equal to r. Okay, so mod w greater than r, the modulus of the function is bounded by m. Okay, and look at mod w less than or equal to r. I'm using the assumption that. Uh, so, I am putting this extra condition that f is, is, is entire 
and mind you uh, I am saying f is entire as a function of w okay okay. So I am trying to look at an entire function which is uh, having a removable singularity at infinity. So f of w itself is an entire function even for w finite okay. So, so you see if, if f of w is entire okay then uh, you know uh, f is analytic at 0. So uh, is analytic at 0 okay f is analytic at 0 because an entire function is supposed to be analytic at every point at every finite point. So if when I say f of w is entire as a function of w it, it should be analytic at for all values of w in the complex plane in particular it should be analytic at 0 and if it is an analytic at 0 then you know if you write out uh, it should tend to a limit as w tends to 0 okay but then look at this expression look at this uh, look at this expression this expression mind you normally this expression will will be valid it is a it is a it is supposed to be a Laurent expansion at infinity so it should be valid only in a neighborhood of infinity but since the function is entire it is valid everywhere it is valid on the whole comp, uh, on the whole complex plane so it is valid at 0 also okay and if it is valid at 0 you can see all the bn's for n uh, 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 non 0 they all should be 0 okay because the moment I get a negative power of w at w equal to 0 it is not going to give me a finite limit it is going to go to infinity because it is going to become like a pole okay. So the moral of the story is that if you assume f is entire then f is analytic at 0 and this will imply that all the uh, bn's are 0 for n not equal to 0 and this this implies that f is a constant okay. So uh, so that is that is that is very obvious so all I am so all I am trying to say is that if you have an entire function which has a removable singularity at infinity then it is a constant what is the contrapositive of that the contrapositive of that is suppose you have a non constant entire function then infinity is certainly not a removable singularity for a non constant entire function infinity cannot be a removable singularity because the only entire function entire functions which are analytic at infinity are the constants okay and you can uh, uh, the, the reason why I uh, got into this uh, uh, this stuff about modulus uh, is because I wanted to say that this is actually uh, another avatar of uh, Liouville's theorem see because you see uh, look at this uh, look at this stuff that I have written in between see f is analytic at infinity so uh, outside a circle of sufficiently large radius mod w greater than r mod f w is bounded okay but if you look at the if you look at the interior of that circle and the boundary of the circle I will get mod w less than or equal to r and you see mod w less than or equal to r is a compact set it is both closed and bounded and I have assumed f is entire so it is continuous you know a continuous function on a compact set is bounded because the image of a compact set uh, under a continuous map is again compact and compact is will imply bounded. So what this will tell you is that there is a bound for f even in mod w less than or equal to r that combined with the bound uh, for mod w greater than r will tell you that f is an entire function which is bounded on the whole plane and then Liu will theorem will tell you that f is a constant. So uh, that is the point I want to tell you I want to tell you that uh, you see this argument that an entire function which is analytic at infinity is uh, is constant is actually another avatar of Liouville's theorem okay it is a it is actually another avatar of Liouville's theorem that is what you have to understand. So uh, uh, the, the, the moral of the story is that whenever you are looking at a non constant uh, entire function infinity is certainly a singularity it is a honest singularity it is not a removable singularity so it can either be a pole or it can be an essential singularity it cannot be a removable singularity and uh, the only exemptions are constants which which we which are very uninteresting okay so i'll stop here